and welcome to the program meet the CEO it is and my name as always is Eugene Anangwe. On the program we always hope to have some leaders of various institutions from across the globe with the hope of making sure that you get to know them better and also to inspire you and today on the program we have a young talented DJ who is managing a DJ unit or an entertainment unit called Spin Cycle Entertainment and is none other than Katrix the Entertainer. My <laughs> God! <laughs> How you doing, sir? Thank you for being on the program. Let man. me tell you something. Yeah. You know, man, I'm very happy to be here. Yes. That's all. Right. Yeah. So tell me uh, about your life, first of all, mm. before being a DJ. Yo. Talk to me about the journey. The journey is long. Mm -hmm. it, it, it started when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Mombasa is in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was born. I did my nursery school there. Mm -hmm. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I finished high school at a very tender age. Mm -hmm. So I cleared high school when I was 14 years old. High school? 14? Yeah, form 4 was done. S so you were taken to yeah, school so early yeah, or what yeah, happened? We or you skipped classes? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were taken to school early. Yeah. And then um, also there's some classes like class 1, I think I did third term. Yeah. We went to class 2, we didn't do much of play group. Yeah. So basically life has just been... On the run yeah. for you. So like when I left, uh, when I left high school, uh, I got admitted to university. Yeah, I was 15, so I was doing a uh, civil and structural engineering at the age of 15. At 15? Yeah. So um, I studied at Moy University in, yeah. in, in yeah. Eldoret mm -hmm. for some time. Um, then from there now is when I started now experimenting mm -hmm. and learning other things. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I could be a very good DJ. Right. And uh, it all started at a house party, man. Let me tell you, it yeah. was crazy. Yeah. My friends were there, you know, campus mates, how you have uh, bashes in the room. Yeah. So, he had a machine. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, yo, can I try this out? And he gave me the chance. Yeah. And from there, I haven't looked back. So, you just tested it during that house party? Yeah. And I played one like song, I played another song. I was like, yo, this, this actually is making some sense. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I was like, this is what I want to do. Right. Mm. And, 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 and this was when you were still 15 or before? No, this was, uh, I was almost 18 now. Uh -huh. But I started at the house parties when I was 15, in, in campus 16, doing a few things. Then I got a job in campus in yeah. one of the clubs. Yeah. Um, we never used to be paid a lot, like 200 bob a night. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't know how much that is. That's uh, $2 yeah. the whole night. Yeah. And then uh, after maybe six months, they add maybe, so you get 250, which is two, $2 dollars mm -hmm. and, <laughs> yeah, and some coins. And a few <laughs> coins. So um, it's a journey. It's a very long journey, and trust me, if you do not persevere, if, yeah. if you're not strong enough, yeah. you can't reach your goal. You can't reach your goal. Mm. Tell me about DJing and schooling, because most of the time, traditionally, we've felt like, you know, once you see your son or your daughter who's still in school <laughs> and is there, chiki 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 yeah. scratching, wants to be a DJ, you know, and, and, and you've been sent to school to study, mm. you know, civil engineering, <laughs> and you're there talking about... Yeah. DJ. I mean, how, how did this go down with your parents? It, it didn't go down well, because um, when I left, like, because cause I, I had to make a choice. Mm. I entered a DJ competition in 2008. Um, so by good luck, I made it to the finals. This was in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to DJ, I was still teaching myself. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, now I was at a crossroads. So mm -hmm. it's either you continue the engineering or you go into DJ. DJ. Yeah. So... I don't know if you remember Code Red, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I was offered a job. Yeah, was that was told, a DJ unit in Kenya. That yeah, time. that was yeah. a big DJ unit. Yeah. So I was told, listen, come to Nairobi. So, since I used to be in Mombasa, I used to travel to Eldoret in school. So come to Nairobi, my friend, there's a job. So I had a choice. I leave civil engineering or I continue with it. So I made a tough decision. Yeah, your parents must have been Yo, so the annoyed at mad. you. My dad didn't talk to me for, I think, six, seven months. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I made him understand that this is exactly what I want. I'm not happy doing mm -hmm. engineering, mm -hmm. understand? I want to do entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I had a clear plan. I told him, listen, I've gotten a job, so I'm not going to tarmac. I've done my Form 4, I've done campus, so what, what, what's the plan? Right. So, so he was pissed. He was so annoyed. Crazy. Yeah. 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 But I can tell you that journey, when you can't talk to anyone, you can't call your dad for money, you can't call your mom for money, you are all alone. 
that's the craziest thing, mm -hmm. trust mm -hmm. me. And I was very young. How did you go through that process, especially looking at your age at that time? And, and, and you've made a choice. You had, you had been put through a system where you could go through schooling and then you decided mm. that, you know what, DJing is what I want to do. And now that tough decision having its consequences. How did you deal with that? Let me tell you, when, when I started off, yeah, like when I came to Nairobi, I didn't have anything. So I had nothing. I had a plate, I had a spoon, and I had a mattress mm -hmm. and a room. That's, that's all I had to my name. Mm -hmm. You can't call nothing. You can't mm -hmm. call your dad, mm -hmm. you can't call your mom. Mm -hmm. So I decided that since I've taken this choice all the way, you understand? So we kept on pushing. We kept on pushing, make a mixtape here, make a mixtape there go perform here, go perform there. And after maybe a year, it paid off. Because mm -hmm. I got called to TV. Um, we started doing now, um, what do you call this, rehearsals, mm -hmm. screen mm -hmm. tests. Mm -hmm. There's a show called Straight Up. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for new DJs, they're mm -hmm. looking for um, another presenter. Mm -hmm. So we started now, mm -hmm. we went there mm -hmm. and, and good luck, we, we went through. Yeah, and, and you got the job. Yeah, I got the job. and. Uh, from there, I've never looked back. Right. Mm. What, what was your, you know, the, the pushing point, which was really, every time you felt like, this is too tough for me, I can't call my mom, I can't call my dad, I just have these plates and spoons, you know, because <laughs> we love eating. There were not two, it was just one. <laughs> just one Just for you. one. Right, so, so during that period when you feel like you want to give up, what was that that was keeping you going all the time? I, 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 I believe in God a lot, yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm very prayerful. So I can say prayer, and hard work, mm -hmm. nothing else. Like, there is no secret to success. Mm -hmm. You have to pray to your God and you have to move your feet. You right. have to work really hard to get there. Right. And trust me, I worked really, really hard. Yeah. And you know, you're a yeah. testament to yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so tell me about now the journey. You know, you have left uh, university, you've made the decision, you've gone uh, and got a deal with Code Red. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, here comes KTN looking for presenters, I mean, and DJs uh, for, for straight up, uh, and you jumping on. Uh, what were the key things that, you know, you put ahead of you to ensure that you still succeed in this life? Um, to anyone, if you're a young guy, yeah. you first need a plan of action. Mm -hmm. You need to know exactly what it is you're going to do. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then you're going to lose it. Yeah. So what was your plan of action then? My plan of action was, I have just told you, yeah. pray, mm -hmm. hard work mm -hmm. till the end. Right. And I had this dream that one day I will open my entertainment company. I will have DJs working under me and it will be conducive. It's not what we went through at mm -hmm. the other companies that we are working with because mm -hmm. it wasn't nice. Mm -hmm. You make someone maybe $2,000 they give you $10 or $20. So mm. you're mm. like, yo, man, I, this, this, this isn't working for me. Mm. So I just kept my mind very, very focused. I was like, this is what I want to do. I started making my connections, knowing I can work with this guy, I can work with this guy. Mm. And at the end of the day, it all came to, to mesh. Because when I left Code Red, there's a DJ called Mr. T. Yeah. He also left Code Red. Mm -hmm. So then there's a friend from uh, Mombasa. Mm. He's called DJ Bonds. Mm. So he took me in, like, he was like, yo, bro, come, let's give you a few gigs. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't have a laptop. Mm -hmm. Told him, you do for us four events, then we pay you, we give you a laptop. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, why not? Let's mm -hmm. do it. And all these people that I'm talking about right now, we still work with them. Like Mr. T and Bones, the directors at Spin Cycle. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that everyone who helped me back then... You give them a piece of yeah, cake. Yeah, and that is the driving factor. Yeah. We're trying to make a change in the DJing industry in Kenya. because. Yeah. Most DJ units, they don't have a conducive environment. What mm. one mm. you get like you don't reap what you sow. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is make make it make it nice, make it conducive for yeah. everyone. Yeah. 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 What really causes this? Because you've been there, mm. um, you know, and and, and your directors uh, at Spin Cycle Entertainment have also been there. Mm. Uh, from your experience, I'm sure there are others who are also in the same environment. Yeah. What really causes this? Um, kind of creating an environment which is not conducive for other DJs uh, who are in that particular mm. unit. It's human, man. Mm. We are all human beings. And uh, there's something called greed. Mm. Greed comes in, then you start looking at everyone else's competition and the people you're supposed to be working with. And then um, people like using other people. Mm. People like the easy way out. Mm. So basically that is greed. And the way people use other people, that is what, that's a major factor. Yeah. That's a major factor. So greed is what pushes uh, the yeah. bosses at this unit 
to, 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 to put their, you know, subjects or juniors mm. in that environment. Yeah, and then it, it's, it's just human. Yeah. There's a boss attitude like, mm. you get, so mm. that, that, that whole thing really pushes guys away. Yeah. So if you can be able to create something where guys, when you come, you're accepted, it's like a family, mm -hmm. then that's, that's the way to go. Some people argue that that is usually in the starting period you mm. know when you guys are starting there's <laughs> that energy there's mm. that feeling of you know i love you guys uh, we have done well tonight mm. you know where you went to mix we have a good report and then with time the grid starts creeping in i mm. mean how are you planning to avoid that at your you unit see, the thing is uh, we were not given any mentorship so the thing at our unit we make sure like when you come in we drum in values my friend mm. every day even right now i was talking to a couple of my my djs mm. And we were discussing about the industry, you know, they're feeling really low, there's something that maybe they need help with. So we just speak to them, because mm -hmm. this is something that most people don't do, most bosses don't. Yeah. You have to speak to your people, you have to understand what is it they want, mm -hmm. what, does this, what drives this person, what drives the other guy. And if you understand your crew, mm -hmm. That's it. You have to understand them. You have to understand right, them. Right, and you constantly talk to them. Yeah, them you, have to, you have to be a mentor. If, if you're going to be a CEO of a company, yeah. you have to be a mentor to everyone. Right. You have to make sure that this guy is doing the right thing. If he messes up, be on his case. Like, yo, bro, I don't, don't do that. I don't like this. Yeah. You know, it's not the right thing to do. And if you guide them, them in like my DJ, we have like around 20 DJs now. So I encourage every DJ to get someone like get another young DJ and mentor. mentor them right you see speak to them tell them yo by the way you know the way you're doing things is not the right way this mm -hmm. is what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing right mm -hmm. take me back you know to the young Catrix before <laughs> <laughs> before getting yeah. to this decision of saying you know what me I want to be a DJ uh, like how was growing up like I mean you have brothers you have sisters yeah, I mean two uh, brothers I'm the firstborn right yeah and I have uh, two bros two younger brothers one is in uh, university the other yeah. one is in uh, form two yeah form three sorry yeah, yeah so it was just normal I'm just a normal guy man yeah. well, what is normal for you <laughs> That's, that is what people want to hear <laughs> what, no, what are those crazy just... things you guys used to do that mm. you remember Mm. and you say huh, you know i remember my childhood and i feel like right no, listen like mombasa is just amazing mm -hmm. it's an amazing place to grow up the cultures there's so many cultures because you see in mombasa you live with the uh, indians you live with waswahili mm -hmm. you know, somali mm -hmm. so you you get you get to learn so much yeah. and then there's a beach my friend you can go to the beach anytime yeah so that that for me man growing up that that was the best right that was the best especially experiencing all these cultures and meeting all these young people. You know, people are very interesting, yeah. especially in Mombasa. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very interesting looking at them, watching yeah. what they do. Yeah. yeah. What do you look back and you say, <laughs> I regret, I regret ever doing that. You know, what are those things no. that you say when, when you're a kid? Kitrix, come on. Akuna. <laughs> yeah, Akuna regrets. Yeah. Maisha ni moja. Yeah. It's only one life. Yeah. Like right now, if I say something wrong, yeah. I won't regret it. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So there are no regrets, man. This, this None. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Completely. Completely. So you've told me about the best moments, you know, going to the beach, mingling yeah, with those people who family, are, you know. You know. Yes. Mm. Uh, so what, what is it that you remember and you feel sad about? I mean, what, about your childhood when you were still young? You're paying bills, man. Mm -hmm. Like you see, when you grow up, you start paying the bills. When you are young, the bills are paid for you. Mm -hmm. So for me, <laughs> that is very sad mm. when you start paying the bills yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you started paying bills is when you started feeling like this Yo. is crazy. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of responsibility, especially, you know, when you're a young guy, then unakuja mm. too things just come up. You told you you have to do this, you have to do this thing. You're like, yo, I I wasn't ready for this. Yeah. Yeah. So basically that whole part of growing up is is it's it's a sad moment I think for everyone. Because right. you can't be a kid twice. Can you can't. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, you know, still remaining with your childhood mm. part with your siblings, yeah. you know, being the, 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 the elder one, mm. you know, most of the time there's always a lot of expectations, you know, when it comes to uh, you need to show the way, you need to lead the way, yeah, you yeah. need to give an example to your younger ones. Mm. Uh, how much of a pressure was this for you, especially with your decisions that you made mm. uh, and your parents feeling how they felt with your decisions? Yeah, it was it, it was tough. Yeah, it yeah. was tough, especially trying to to mentor the the, 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 the my brothers. Yeah. But again, um, I don't want to dwell too much on my childhood because, like right now, what we're doing um, with my brothers yeah. is 
I've taken in my brother now. Mm -hmm. We're doing uh, the one who's in university. Mm -hmm. So he's working for us at Spin Cycle. Mm -hmm. So he does our design. He's also, he's, he hasn't finished yet, but mm -hmm. now we, we make sure that he's doing his stuff. Mm -hmm. So we guide him as well. The other young one also, we still guide him. Right. So I couldn't have been able to do that. When back you're then. Young. Yeah, yeah, you get, but I'm still young, man. I'm just 26. Yeah. Why, why are yeah. you making me yeah. old? <laughs> you know, uh, being old is about the maturity and, yeah. and that's what I'm talking about here. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, um, where we have come from yeah. and where we have reached, yeah. I'm sure even my bros appreciate. They right. appreciate exactly what it is that we're trying to do. Right. And yeah. Right. Uh, so we're going to take a very short break. And of course, when we come back from the break, we, we, we delve deeper yeah. into Spin Cycle Entertainment, Catrix, the father, Yo. and Catrix, the husband. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, there's, uh, there's some people in, in, in Mombasa. Yeah. Who want me to run for a member of county of assembly? Of course, we're going to talk so, about that as well. Yeah. Politics. Yes. Right, thank you so much. Still uh, to come, of course, those are the things that we're going to be touching on right here on Meet the CEO. The CEO we are meeting today is the young CEO of Spin Cycle Entertainment, an entertainment unit in Kenya, Catrix the Entertainer. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. <laughs>